Today is May 28, 2014, and we're interviewing Eugene Holford at the Adams County Courthouse. Eugene is 91 years old, having been born on February 11, 1923. My name is Jennifer Fisher, and I'll be the interviewer. Eugene, could you state for the recording what war and branch of service you served in? Well, I served in the Second World War, and uh, the Army, I think, was the main branch of my service. I think it was, uh, in the end, it was Army engineers. Okay. Yeah. What was your we, rank? My rank was tech sergeant, and uh, I went from a what? Well, basic private to sergeant. Okay, where, and where did you serve? I served from um, uh, November 30th, 1943, entering at the Great Lakes, and I was honorably discharged February 23rd, 1946. Two hours, or two years, Three months and 15 days. Right. And where, where at did your service take you? What parts of the world? Well, I first started out at, at Chicago and uh, the Great Lakes. I went in Chicago, mm -hmm. Great Lakes. I was inducted in the Army then. And <clears throat> we, Chicago, and then we uh, left. Well, we got outfitted with Army clothing and shoes, socks, smallpox, smallpox typhoid, tetanus, and then uh, a whole bag full, you know. And then we boarded a train and headed for Fort Riley, Kansas for three months basic training, February, March, and April. Or January, February, March, excuse me. Uh, took rifle training out there and uh, all kinds of basic training, five mile force marches and calisthenics. We'd get up early in the morning and jump like this, you know. All this, you know, we really. It seemed like we really got toughened up, yeah. and uh, I, to tell you the truth, I ate so many of the uh, shoe leather pancakes. What does that mean? <laughs> well, <laughs> they were tough, you yeah. know, shoe leather pancakes, and we got... Uh, uh, training, and then I, well, I actually gained 25 pounds. Can you imagine that? In, in basic training, it was so tough, and, you know, we just ate everything. You know, I could go to the uh, PX after one of them force marches and all that, and just eat anything. A lot of milkshakes, and I gained 25 pounds during that three months. Oh. Toughened you up muscles and food, huh? With muscles and food, right? Working out? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, so what did you go, um, where else did you go after basic training? Okay, well, after basic training, I went to uh, Fort... Well, it's in Fort. It's part of Fort Riley, uh, Camp Fort Camp Funkston. That's it, Camp Funkston, and that's where I took vehicle training, uh, educational. It was, it was an educational school, three months education school, learning how to change batteries and keep vehicles going and all kinds of anything that was 
had to do with uh, vehicles. We, we were educated on that three months. And then, you want me to Yes, continue? keep going, yes. Okay. And I, then I went to um, Camp Gruber, Oklahoma, to take tank mechanic schools. So I drove and learned the mechanics of those tanks, M5A1 tanks. And uh, you would guide them with uh, two handles up like this. Mm -hmm. that, that makes those tracks go one way or the other, you know. So um, we did a lot of studying on all those, uh, you know, at night. And, and uh, we took the training on... Um, uh, what do you call it? Those arcs. What do you when the, that arc makes that uh, melts that iron? Welding. Welding. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> and in fact, uh, one of the times, you know how you're inquisitive at that young age. Mm -hmm. You know, I was only twenty. <laughs> And I was inquisitive to the fact that I, uh, I'm just going to peek at that just a little bit. Boy, that was bad. Because that night, my eyes were burning. Mm -hmm. Well, I couldn't sleep. That just shows you. They, they give you those things to hold in front of you. So you don't look at that direct, because you look at that direct, and it just burns your eyes. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the highlights of that training there. A lesson learned. Yeah, but we, we really enjoyed uh, that training, because we could drive those tanks over those Oklahoma mountains, mm -hmm. little, little rolling mountains. So that was our second school. Very interesting. Where else did you go after that? Well, we then then we went to the third school, and that was in Fort Belvoir, Virginia, just outside of Washington D.C. And that was interesting place. I I liked that school because I I like. Drawing, mechanical drawing, you know, when you put down the, draw that. So we made maps out of aerial photo. Oh, wow. Aerial photos you'd take, and they put them together, and they would, you could see uh, that they would kind of raise up. You could see the height and the look, depth of the aerial photo topographers. And uh, how are we going now, Art? You're good. You it's keep on training, or on time, so to speak. You you've only talked for eight minutes and about forty five seconds. Oh my God! So okay. we, well, yeah, we have a lot of time left. Yeah. All right. Well, then we. Um, well, it was interesting in Washington D.C. for me to see all of the different. Capitol buildings, you know, and that sort of thing. I had two weekends off to um, see where the uh, uh, entertainment and Night so light. forth and went to the, uh, uh, what do they call those things where you entertain and uh, the army engineers, army people entertain. Or they entertain the army. Okay. It's uh, what what is that? Uh, where they? I'm not sure. Uh, A USO. USO. That's it. <laughs> USO, and that was interesting was too. It? So of course uh, the war was pretty much 
the main thing. You know, mm -hmm. we were all on an army basis, mm -hmm. I guess, even back in Quincy, you know, when you were eating and living the war. So um, we uh, took, had three months training there, and I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed all the schools. They were, because I had been to school, and I was from Illinois. I went to I went to the Army. I went to two years at Illinois, and then I went to the Army. And then I came back and went back to school two more years. Oh, wow. So you went to late school. Yeah. yeah. So I graduated from U uh, University of Illinois. Did you ever okay. go? Oh, go ahead. Then we go back to Camp Gruber, Oklahoma. Okay. And uh, uh, after a while there, I know we one thing happened while we were there. It stands out in my mind. This was sixty odd years ago. We had a tornado come through Oklahoma, and that's Tornado Alley, mm -hmm. and it blew, or you know. Blew the uh, water tank down, you know, big massive water tank oh, wow. up there, and so we were out of water. You know, we had to. What are we going to do about water? You know, we were out there, and uh, it was warm by that time. Mm -hmm. So we uh, just had to make do with that water. Uh, I guess we didn't shower uh, maybe as regular <laughs> as usual. But anyway, uh, it was interesting. And then, uh, w well, I did go into um, what's uh, Oklahoma, Oklahoma. Um, there's two towns in Oklahoma that we went into. It was one of them, Tulsa? Tulsa and, uh, yeah. And that was uh, one of the uh, places where we went to the USO and uh, For entertainment. danced and yeah. so forth like that. Okay. And uh, I did dance there because I was raised up on dancing. As a kid, at home, we uh, it was in the depression. Didn't have any money. Didn't go any place, you know, particular. And we would be dancing in the kitchens, and the living rooms, you know, mm -hmm. roll up the the carpet and start dancing. They'd have their banjos and their violins and the piano and. The, so you were taught early how Drums. to dance. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was brought up on dancing. And I still dance today. Wonderful. Three three times a week normally here. Oh, at the Senior Center? At Once the Senior there, Dances? And the Eagles and uh, American Legion. Wow, that's wonderful. Yeah. I've been to the Senior Dances. Those are nice. Yeah. So, uh, let's see, where was you I? You went uh, dancing at the USO. Oh, dancing at the USO, yeah, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I didn't know we were in the uh, Tornado Alley, but I found out afterwards, you know. <laughs> it was, that was kind of interesting. Did you ever go overseas? Did you go overseas? Yes, I went overseas to the South Pacific. When was that? Uh, the date. Oh, if you don't remember, that's okay. I don't remember the date. Do you remember anyway, how long you were there? Uh, we were uh, there for uh, oh, about, I'm going to say, eight, nine months. <laughs> we landed on Luzon, the island there. And uh, we fixed 
up at an uh, airport there and cut it out of the coral reef and put it on the uh, iron uh, mesh so that planes could land on that. Oh, okay. And uh, then we, we were in charge of the water supply or we dug a hole in, in there and back from the from the coast so that we could get not salt water, just regular pure, pure water. And then we would put uh, chlor chlorophyll, no? uh, where they put in the water now. Uh, chlorine? Chlorine. Put chlorine in the water and uh, kept that water going for the whole base, you know. Oh. So that was, that was, you were there for eight or nine months. While you were there, did you get immersed in the culture? Did you get immersed in the culture there? Emergency. Immersed in the culture. What kind of things did you do while you were there? Well, we sw uh, swam in the China Sea. That's neat. <laughs> Now, that's kind of funny. We take our, our uh, what do you call it? It's a, think of these things you can't think of. Well, anyway, it was a mattress cover. We'd okay. soak that in the salt water, uh -huh. and then we'd run along the sandbar and blow that up and tie it shut. And then we'd hold it over our heads and walk out into the, as far as we could walk. And then those breaking waves would come in. And then we'd ride that mattress cover <laughs> into the beach. So you made your own floats. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, made our own fun. Yeah, there were many other fun at that time, but then uh, <clears throat> there was one other thing before we got on, on the way to that, that uh, ship, to get on the ship to go yeah. over. Uh, we stopped at Pocatello, Idaho, and that, on that ship, or on that trip, the captain we had a four-hour layover there, and he decided we, we could get off, you know, kind of get off the train and walk around or sure. see something. And, you know, what the guys do when you get off like that, they start drinking alcohol, you know, mm -hmm. and, and get bottles of alcohol. And of course, everybody didn't do it, but, you know, the ones that like it, they get a get to drinking alcohol and then bring them bottles of alcohol back to the train mm -hmm. and put it in there or stash it away or something. Well, he, the captain found out we were doing that and he ordered inspection of the whole train. And they found 20 or more bottles of whiskey. Oh, wow. And they took them out behind the train and broke them on the railroad track. Bang, 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 bang. 20 bottles. That really made the guys mad, you know. And it was just like a mutiny. You know what a mutiny is? Where they react against the authority, so to speak. And, and they did this on the train? Yeah. Yes, and it took a oh, hour and a half, two hours or so, I don't know, to get it to get them settled down before we could pull off. And then we went to San Francisco. And the first thing we got to San Francisco, we got a new captain. Oh, really? They were after that guy. They'd have, he would have been... I don't know what they would have done, you know, but they they were made a lot of gestures after this captain, you know, mm -hmm. 
just kind of under undercurrent yeah. mur uh, mumbling or something. Tension. And he didn't want to be the captain of that, so they removed him and give us a new captain. And that's when we were named 684th Light Equipment Engineers. And that was in San Francisco. That's right. Before we went off to um, the South Pacific. Okay, so you left San Francisco by ship for the South Pacific. Yeah, we didn't know where we were going, however. We knew we were going into transport. And then um, we we uh, started going under the Golden Gate Bridge. You know that to go under the Golden Gate Bridge, eyeballs that yeah. big, you know. And you know we were just kids, more or less, twenty years old, you know. Mm -hmm. And so we went under the Golden Gate Bridge, and the captains of the ship. Through his microphone, said he we're we're going into war conditions now, and there'll be no more lights on the ship. Don't do any smoking or anything like that. See, so this was real war time. You know, that's when it really sunk in. You know, because I'd been having fun before, somewhat, but uh, then it was pretty serious. So I stayed up on ship as long as I could and then went down and everybody was sick, seasickness in the ship. Mm -hmm. And we, this old boat just, it was a, a liberty ship. Now, if you know what liberty ship is, it's a round bottom ship. Okay. It's not a not a big troop ship. It's troop ship, all right, but it's not a big. It's a round bottom, and it just rolled, 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 rolled way over. You'd think well, it was going to go completely over, and then it would roll back. The whole time. Well, whenever the water was rough, they would do that. We was on it thirty-one days, so we had plenty of time. For the water to be a little rough, you know. Oh, sure. 31 days on the ship? 31 days on the ship. Wow. And then um, we went zigzag so that the Japanese air, airplanes would not get us, bomb us, you know. Mm -hmm. That was protection, I guess, is what they, but that's the way it went. On the water, 31 days, went, I don't know how many miles, you know, or right, but that's long, that's, I'm going to guess three, four, five thousand miles over there. Yeah. You know, halfway around the world, or maybe even more than yeah, that. Huh? a long way. Yeah. So after 31 days, you... 31 days. We, uh, well, while on the ship, I, we played a lot of poker, you know, to pass yeah, the time yeah. away. We just played poker and, mm -hmm. and we'd go down and eat and, and we'd come up and play some more poker. And of course, when it was raining and starving, we'd be down in the hole. Mm -hmm. So, I was ready to get off the ship. I'll how many you. were on? How many people were on there, on the ship? Oh, I'd say there was about three hundred, okay. three hundred and fifty, something like that. Okay. I never knew exactly how many, how much that ship, but it, it was a pretty good sized ship, but it, mm -hmm. uh, there were bigger ones. Mm -hmm. were. And uh, then. We landed over there in the Philippines. How how are we coming now on time? You've got plenty of time. You're you're at about almost twenty five minutes, but you can talk as long as you want to. We're we're talking. Uh, we have talked twenty five minutes. Got five more to go. Huh? Or longer. 
or longer. Uh -huh. Oh. Okay, well, let's see. What are we going to do then? Well, after we're, uh, we were, our platoon was in charge of the water supply for the whole base. So we drilled this well back off of the, off the coast mm -hmm. so it would get salt water in there and then put that What's what do you call that stuff we were putting in it? Chlorine. Chlorine, yeah. And so we lived through it, and we drank that water, and uh, you could taste that chlorine in there. Oh, really? You know, if you're, I didn't, I didn't notice it back here when I'd go to the swimming pool, like out the Indian Mounds. Mm -hmm. I could taste that chlorine in that water. I guess some don't. Wouldn't hurt. I guess you got too much. You probably get sick. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, we go. We get there, and uh, and then I found out that my cousin was in Clark Field in the Philippines on Luzon. Clark Field was one of the big airports of our country when we were in the in the war, mm -hmm. so to speak. And uh, <clears throat> so I got a, I uh, was able to reconnoiter a, a little jeep and went down to see him about 40 miles. Oh. Wonderful. And Clark Field. Well, before that, I had got malaria. And I was in the hospital on our base right there in, mm -hmm. in uh, when, where we landed. I forgot that name again. Uh, anyway, I was in the hospital three weeks with malaria. Did a lot of the yeah. men and, get the malaria? And kept taking, the, you know, Adabrin uh, to keep getting it or mm -hmm. help, help to relieve yourself. And finally, uh, the I got so sick that I bit the thermometer in two. Oh, my. Two pieces, yeah. you know, or three pieces of the thermometer. I, you know, just clamped down on. I was just sick. I didn't know what to do. Mm. Well, anyway, uh, I lived through that, and the nurses, you know, were there and they tried to help me and all that. Well, then I go to see my cousin down there in Clark Field, and by golly, I got malaria again. You did. Yeah, this was, you know, maybe a month apart or something like that. So then you were back into the hospital? Yeah, back in the hospital on Clark Field, in, in Clark Field. And <clears throat> if you notice now, Clark Field is covered with ashes from that volcano that, that blew that stuff up and covered Clark Field. Yes with about of ashes with almost a foot of ashes. So it put Clark Field out of business. Hmm. And uh, in one of the places, I went uh, to, um, well, I went, finally I got to go back to my, uh, my own troop, you know, yeah. or own company. And, uh, Another issue that I was doing, they, I was hauling big, big water tanks. We'd put two of them on a big low boy. They're steel water tanks. You know, 10, 12, 15 feet in diameter. Mm -hmm. And we would then drive those, and there was two of us, so we drew that job of driving 
those tanks between Filipino guerrillas, guerrilla camps. <clears throat> two different, uh, two different trips. And while we were riding, we would be standing up with our knees bent because the road was so rough, it just, oh God, just drive you nuts. <laughs> and so we did that and ate uh, uh, Filipino uh, rice. That's our big mainstay. Is that we ate a lot of rice, and then uh, there was some of that uh, that we have now. That fruit salad, we have uh, all kinds of cans of that fruit salad. Okay. We just eat that. And got to where I just had so much of that couldn't eat it. Didn't want that anymore. No. Oh God, I'm not, I didn't need it until I came home two or three years, I guess, after I got home. Couldn't eat that yeah. stuff. So then we, another thing we got is, we call it reconnoiter, this Jeep. And my friend and I went up, drove up to the Philippine summer capital up in the mountains of Baguio. Baguio is the okay. name of that. That's the summer capital of the Philippines because it gets so, I don't know, it's, they thought it was so hot and dry and yeah. wet down there. So anyway, uh, we go up this Baguio up the mountain, you know, oh, it was oh, high. I don't, I don't know how high it was, but it, it seemed high to me. And on the way, we ran into a tribe of Filipino banty-leg people. I've, I've Bant never heard of them. Banty-leg? Have you ever heard of that? They have shorter legs, you know, half half as short as ours. The entire tribe does? The, the entire tribe. Oh, wow. And I, uh, then I was able to get a little uh, uh, gun. I traded for a gun, a, a Japanese rifle. Oh. You know, that's... Kind of, kind of rare for over there for us anyway. So you were able to trade something for that and then bring it home with you? Yes. Uh -huh. I st I st you still, still have, have it? it? Wow. Well, I, I guess my grandson kind of, I don't know whether he has or I have it. I know one of us. Okay. He likes those things. So anyway, then we got home and... Uh, uh, I guess I earned enough points. You earn points when you're overseas to get to come home. And I earned enough points from being overseas and mm -hmm. different things we did that I could come home. So then I loaded on the ship, and it was a a big troop ship, you know, and we come back in about five days. Much different than the 30 days. Oh, yeah. Was it as, um, was there as much seasickness or is it rough as the, the trip out there? No, no, it wasn't because that was the kind of a ship that was built like this, see. Okay. And our ship was built like this. So you made it back fast and... Yeah, head back fast in five days. And then, uh, you know, we just weren't, we didn't, wasn't looking around, we weren't doing any sightseeing or anything. We just, next thing we knew, we were on a troop train or a train going back to Illinois. And we landed at St. Louis, Illinois, and was discharged there at uh, 
What's what's the name of that place? The the uh, Jefferson Barracks. Jefferson Barracks. That's it. In Missouri. In Missouri, in St. Louis, yeah. And then before you knew it, you know, you wonder, well, how did I get home? You know, I was, you just you were just there, and you just got home. But I I know I uh, I got home just by bus or. You know, we did a lot of uh, uh, hitchhiking. Hitchhiking, yes. You did. I think I might have hitchhiked almost. Home from St. Louis? From St. Louis. Did your family know you were coming home? Well, I can't really tell you whether, I, you know, we didn't have cell phones. We didn't have a no telephone. And you're on this train and where are you going? Mm -hmm. You just... Was it hard to, then to stay in touch? Stay, it was yes. hard to stay in touch. Yes, it was hard to stay in touch. Yeah, you you know, you'd write a letter and take a couple of weeks before that would ever get home. Mm -hmm. Or uh, they'd write a letter from home and take you two or three weeks to ever get with you. Maybe months. We get some uh, candy, uh, Christmas candy and cookies and stuff like that. Moldy when we got time. there, so we didn't eat it. What was it? What was it like between you and your your fellow soldiers? Did you meet a lot of good friends? Yes, one a special friend. <clears throat> He and I went to at least two schools together. Or, well, we were in basic training. Mm -hmm. Then we went to vehicle mechanic and tank mechanic. And he was an Italian fella. And I wished I could remember his name, but I sure it just didn't. Uh, you know, we, we, were, we were going here and going there. And, mm -hmm. And, uh, but we had, uh, you know, we talked to fellows all the time. Some would be in different jobs and you'd try to, you're in and out of this hospital, stay in three weeks. And we were doing, uh, we were able to do USO. Leather work. I remember I made a leather um, billfold while I was in there. We were in three weeks. Now they kept you there. I don't know why they did that, but I, I, I could have gone out in two. One week you're really sick, the next week you're recuperating, the third week you were just, what are you going to do? You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, so anyway, um, we we did uh, that leather work, you know, and, and uh, made that billfold. And I think it was another thing. I forgot what it, it was that I made. And I tried to, you know, maybe keep that with me. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure whether I did or not. That was a long time ago. 60 years, or 65 years for me. So after you, what was it like when you came home? What was it like for you? Well, it, it didn't ever, I never seemed like I was able to put my feet on the floor, so to speak. I was just kind of gingery, kind of moving, or felt that way. Mm -hmm. And finally, I went back to Jim City Business College to try to settle down. I thought, well, you go to school, try to settle down, and that, and then, um, of course, that was during midsummer or something. And then in, in the fall, where we were able to go back to University of Illinois and continue my education 
on the GI Bill of Rights. You did use that. And that was a lifesaver. Yeah. So you went, you did two more schools, two more years of school. Yes. Two more years of school. Uh -huh. Do you, <coughs> do you feel that your um, military experience influenced your thinking about war or military in general? Uh, yes, I, I didn't want any more of that. I wanted to try to do everything to stay away from war. Uh, but some of our leaders, I don't think, want to do that. Would you encourage uh, young men and women to enlist today? Yes, if they uh, if they feel like they had to go, I I think if I would have enlisted, I might have went more places or took more training and so forth like that. Of course, I had three schools. Yes. So what, what's the most positive thing that you took away from your experience in the service? Most positive thing. Well, my, my schooling, I think, is what most positive. Like mm -hmm. Yeah. Was, what was, was there anything negative? Negative. Well, I try not to make things negative. I try to keep everything positive, and uh, I think it worked. Mm -hmm. I didn't uh, do a lot of uh, crabbing about uh, the army and so forth. And, mm -hmm. However, I did learn to smoke in there. Army, but I gave it up when I got out. That was positive. Yes, sir. Yeah. So I haven't smoked for 50 years. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there anything else you want to add to the interview today? Well, you know, those things like that, uh, that. Uh, Mutiny on the bounty on that train was something else. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I wondered what we were going to do. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, one good thing we didn't have our guns. You know, we weren't able to shoot each other. But uh, that, that was a bad experience. Mm -hmm. And that that captain, I I wonder what happened to him. Because they were they were after him. He yeah. was he was uh, if he went overseas and he probably did with another outfit. But mm -hmm. if he went over with this, I think somebody would have got him. They were that upset. Yeah. Well, maybe they, maybe they got over it, but <laughs> that was a wild experience. Yeah, sounds like it. Uh, Just one more question. How has your service and the experiences you had affected your life? Well, I think it taught me how to work. I, I think, in fact, I have I've worked all the way through life. Uh, I got into insurance work. <clears throat> First, when I came out of college, I was in the uh, uh, medical, let's see, I can't think again, but, well, we, we far, assistant farm advisor, Okay. And uh, 
out of the University of Illinois. And then uh, I went, insurance looked kind of good to me, some place where you could make some money. I never, you know, made a whole lot of money. And then I got into insurance and you could work as hard as you wanted mm -hmm. and make as much as you could work. Mm -hmm. So that was always, so I, uh, I did all right financially. So it taught you hard work. Hard work. So Army must have taught me hard work, I think. I got married, had one daughter, and she's the best. She's the best. So. Thank you, Eugene. Okay, thank you for asking me to, or letting me tell about this story. I wasn't going to come down, because uh, I thought, well, now I've not been in a, uh, uh, you know, combat, mm -hmm. and I told my daughter, I said, well, I don't think I should really go to this, and she said, if you don't want to go, you don't have to. Tell me if we can cancel, and then later on we said, well, they maybe should have somebody uh, that wasn't in the combat different side of the... You have a very interesting story. Very interesting. Uh -huh. I, I thought it was uh, after, uh, you know, sat down and thought through all these things here, I, I, it was more interesting than I thought, really. <laughs> well, thank you. Yes, well, I thank you.